Hey, it's Amy, and today we're going to cringe at, <clears throat> I mean read, the comment app essay that got me into Caltech. Three quick tips about the essays before we start. Be reflective, show your thought process and or your problem solving skills, don't just recount the events that happened. Speaking of reflecting, whatever this was, at the end of this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts about why my essay was maybe compelling to admissions apparently. That's a lot of modifiers there. Don't use that many modifiers. Two, start as early as you can. Read the prompts as soon as possible so you can really be processing in the back of your mind all your life experiences to decide what stories actually are meaningful and the best to be in your application. And this way you can also get as many revisions as you need from as many different people as you need. Finally, this is what I think is called the thumb test. If you put your thumb over the name of the essay and it could have been written by someone else, then it doesn't represent yourself well enough. Onto the essay. I feel like I'm exposing myself even more than in that how I got into Caltech video. And this is the first time reading these essays since helping Angel with her college applications to get into Caltech. So I'll be trying not to cringe or laugh during the reading, but I did help Angel get in. So there you go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In seventh grade, I knew the Pythagorean theorem all too well or so I thought. Dr. Song ordered me to prove this formula. The request stunned me, and I tried uncomfortably to think of how wild he stared at me. After a few minutes, he announced that he could prove it in 42 ways. My impressed expression was responded with his memorable statement, math is a lot. This was my very first private math lesson, and I had excelled in math before and eagerly assisted my friends, but it became a passion after Dr. Song's enlightenment. The math, true math Dr. Song presented to me was way more than just equations and formulas. Instead, I discovered a way of thinking, a beautiful way of thinking that I found fun, even enjoyable. It was the shortest two hours I'd ever experienced. From then on, I looked forward to every Tuesday night, anticipating what new wonders Dr. Song would show me. I eagerly completed the problem sets and found new problems online that I figured out with my dad's assistance. School math class was no longer about finishing classwork and understanding the teacher's notes, but was about the why behind the solutions and formulas. I not only raised my hand to answer my teacher's questions, but I also asked an equal number of questions back to quench my thirst for understanding. My mind may have been opened up to mathematical equations, but there was a more troubling social equation. Being a teenager means a constant struggle of choosing which side of the equation to stand, the accepted cool group or the alienated nerdy one. Since I was on interscholastic basketball and volleyball teams in middle school, I was surrounded by cool kids, so I wanted to hide my passion because of the notion that math is nerdy. I was caught between two worlds. Since I wanted to be like the other athletes, I refrained from mentioning math club and competitions, but this also diminished my overall confidence. I was known in middle school to be quiet, but that wasn't the real me, so I resented being defined that way. It was high school and a math class filled with upperclassmen that wiped away my worries about how others value what I love. I found that since high school paves the foundation into college, it's important to find one's true self, and if that involves something useful, even better. I was influenced by the upperclassmen's thinking and even became inseparable friends with many of them. Propelled by my passion, in junior year I began to take more risks. The goal being to show more people that someone good at math and doing math competitions can actually be cool. I wanted more people to see the math the way I could, so I looked for opportunities to tutor others and became the first student to assist teachers with Eagle Hour, after school math tutoring. Summer before senior year, I got together a few of my friends and organized my own math program for ACT and SAT math and school math preparation. It felt necessary that the attitude Dr. Song taught me be shared with other people, that my math was used for a greater cause. I wanted to show by example that someone can proudly do what they love while also having friends and a life, and at the same time, be athletic. Math is the pathway that helped shape my life, and I want to use those skills for my whole life. I got my confidence from math, the equation between being socially capable and embracing my my passion became my Pythagorean theorem. Instead of having the two sides be separated on opposite ends, I made them meet to create a third. I am the cool nerd. That's a cute ending. Oh, look at that analogy. I completely forgot about that. So looking back on this essay now, many years later, I really see and remember why I chose this particular topic to answer the question that's the main essay that represents ourselves. Because it represents the story and the growth that I went through all those years to get to the point I was then, a senior writing and applying to college and applying to Caltech in 
particular. It showed a struggle and then taking that struggle into something more powerful and kind of embracing the differences that I had. Transformation, I think it's a good theme to have in your college essays. I would say though that middle school insecurities and the transformation through that is kind of said to be cliche and you might want to avoid that but I think in my case I framed it in a very unique way with math and then the analogy the reader could tell I was being genuine about and that it was the major part of what made me who I am so I think in that case like yeah if your story is kind of in a cliche theme or whatever you call it then it's okay as long as you make it genuine and detailed and just show your voice through it just show how much you care about your story and like that's the purpose of the college essay to paint a picture of who you are behind all of those stats gpa and numbers you know going through the essay little by little the beginning is quite good i must say it's like a very unique hook i think where the admissions officer is like oh great why am i reading math all of a sudden let's see what this essay is about and then when i get into the meat and take this reader into the scene and let them feel how I felt in that moment, the emotion and the realization of how math is so much more. You know, it just takes the reader, I think, on this journey with me and then makes them feel compelled to read the rest and be like, mm, how does this kind of shape the person that I am? For Caltech in particular, you can kind of see why this topic is especially good for getting into a STEM school because you have to really enjoy it to go through the tough studies and in this essay you can clearly see that I enjoy math a lot. Math competitions and learning from Dr. Song was really the trigger that led me on this path to even consider Caltech. So it's truly a piece of me that if I had not talked about it in this application in this very kind of almost loving way, my application would be incomplete. This is another tip. Each sentence in my essay was very very purposeful. Like if the essay could go on without a certain sentence, then it doesn't need to be there to take up word count. It's also good that in the second to last paragraph, I described how explicitly math is a pathway that helped shape my life and that I will want to use those skills for the rest of my life. Again, that's very compelling for a STEM school in particular because they want those people who are going to be using those STEM schools to kind of shape society and kind of make a positive difference by me feeling so passionate and strong about this area is quite compelling. Finally, tying everything up in this pretty little bow of this last paragraph. This is a cool paragraph, honestly. Like, I can't believe I thought of the <laughs> angles thing. I mean, sides things for a Pythagorean theorem. And I think for an essay, when you read it, think about yourself in the admissions shoes. That person has read so many essays. When they go through yours, you want it to kind of stick in their head and be memorable. And at the end, make them feel like, oh, that was nice. That was a good resolution. And feel satisfied. I think this last paragraph makes someone feel satisfied. I know I'm explaining a lot of things in terms of Caltech, but more of this ramble is is that since this is the common app essay and it went to other schools as well and then I got into Caltech and not other schools it's kind of a way of saying that okay this essay that I think represents me spoke to this school which means that this school does suit me so in a way that's why fate would have it that Caltech is technically my dream school I don't know if that's doesn't make sense or it's confusing, but it's another kind of reassurance that if you truly show the person you are in your essays, in your application, whatever, then the school who picks you or admits you with more likelihood is going to be the one that does suit you. So this essay was very quirky and I would say that Caltech is indeed pretty quirky. Analyze the essay how you would like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you think this was, I don't know, cringy. It was a little cringy, but it got me in Caltech, which is all that matters. Cool, that's my uh, ramble for today. So good luck on your college applications, your essays, and remember, be yourself and shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Your high school self might be cringy to your future self, but if they got into the place that they enjoyed, then that's awesome. That's all that matters. And even if you get into somewhere where you think you will not like, a lot of things can happen. College is a shot in the dark. Just remember that what you do in college, meeting new people, those things are what really matters. You can find that advice in this video here. Tutor others and became the first student. Sorry. It's okay. You sounded like you're reading. I am. Oh. Uh...
You're reading something? Yeah, I'm reading my comment at the essay. Sorry, sorry.